Isn't it made of seashells? Yes, little seashells of creatures that have died long ago. And yet your Bible says that death didn't come into, into the world until Adam ate of the apple. Well, what was the dagger-toothed T-Rex eating, huh? It didn't have blunt teeth to, cry, to, to grind up fibrous plants better. And what was Mr. T Triceratops using its lance horns for? Or the Ankylosaurus using all its armor for? No death, huh? Yeah, something is really going to happen when the missiles explode. When, when the missile explodes. Just a lot more pain and just a lot more misery in this stupid, crazy world is all. And then Ted says, I know there, I, I know there are things in this world that seem to make the Bible look like a nomadic fairy tale, but look. If one could prove the existence of God through science, then that would mean that science would be your savior. Who would need, Bi who would need the Bible if all you need to do is study science? Roger. Wrong, Ted. Wrong. Your Bible says you, says you have to believe in Christ to be saved, not God. Your very own Bible says the demons believe and tremble. Ted looks at his guest, looks at his, uh, looks at his watch, looks at his guest. It's getting close to 2 in the morning. I must have miscalculated the time that I thought it would be midday in Jordan. Uh, look, folks. God says he is a hidden God. Instead of lying to us by making it look like there, look like, it look like uh, there was evolution, it could be God's attempt, to, uh, attempt at making it look like he doesn't exist. That's possibly a way of, to keep drama in our lives. But still... There are some things in nature that just can't be explained. The TVs come on showing Dave Matsuda in the Tel Aviv newsroom. Dave, happy. The air raid sirens are off, Michelle. The Michelle, the, the missile that was that we all thought would be going to that we all thought was going to be headed for Israel is actually headed for the Sinai Desert region. Ted jumping up. Oh my gosh! Some of us guess what? Ted quickly. I'll tell you later. Dave, it's going it's only going to stir up the desert snakes and scorpions is all. Michelle. You sure you look you sure look relieved. A male voice in the newsroom where Dave is uh, standing. Apparently Marty wasn't bright enough to program in the right coordinates of that very long range missile of his. Dave. Let's hope so. Two male voice. Or maybe there is some divine force that changed its course to protect Israel? We are the chosen here, you know. Michelle, I think, I think you have been in the Holy Land much too long, Dave. That's what you said earlier this morning. <laughs> it's totally missed its mark, and suddenly the entire newsroom lights up. Michelle screams, Dave! Dave, what the hell? Michelle screaming, Dave, what was that? Don't tell me it. It was. Runs over to the window. I don't see anything. Runs out in the background. A voice in the background. Look! To the southwest! Dave does. Wimpers falls to his knees, covers his eyes. No! Michelle. Dave! What is it? Dave looks up, covers his face again. No! Ted, excited, jumps up now. Woohoo! This is it! I'm out of here! <laughs> Michelle. Dave, how bad is it? Ted gets up in front of the video cameras. Looks very serious. Uh, uh, yeah, looks very serious. It's any second now. Hurry. It's any second now. Hurry. You haven't much time. Except Christ now. Looks at the TV set. Ah! Look! There it is! There it is! Standing in the Sinai, the holy place. Please, please, you don't have much time. Voice of Dave. All TV sets in the show a mushroom cloud. I sure or hope that was the only one. TV's fade to darkness. Ted. Ah, friends. Mushroom cloud, H-bomb, Sinai desert, possibly Mount Sinai, very holy place, abomination of desolation, hello, standing where it ought not. Waves at Roger. Hello. Teresa. God, he really has nukes. Ted. Something I've been warning you about for the past 30 years. Interesting how it finally all came into being today, don't you think? Look, I'm still here. The train hasn't left yet. You hell had better make sure your minds... You, sh you, sh you should... You all had better make up your minds and fast. Roger. It says, 
it, it can't be what you think it is, Ted. It can't be. But it is. And maybe the anaconda didn't slow there across the Bering Straits. Uh, the Bering Strait. Maybe the continent split up at a fast rate of speed when God confounded our language at Babel. Maybe the Native Americans, anacondas, and other life forms are always here. Robert. Nervously. Well, how does one become saved? Repent. Ask Christ to come into your life. Sandra. That's it? And that's it? Roger to Sandra. And then never live and enjoy life. Ted to Sandra. But you'll enjoy heaven. Roger. Ted, nothing is going to happen. So the Iraqi leader has nukes. Big friggin' deal. He fires his at Israel. Israel fire its at Iraq. And a whole lot of hate-filled people who feel that they are right and the other guy is wrong will eliminate each other. And then guess what, Ted? Life will go on. And you want to know why? Because there is no God, at least no personal God. Ted. Who made the complex eye, Roger? Or ear, huh? Who made the human brain? Who taught the weaver birds to weave, the, the bees to understand sun dances so they can gather pollen and make more honey than they can even use? Do you actually believe that pretty and sexy Sandra over here to be the product of ancient horny bacteria? And, and who made the complicated DNA molecule that can reproduce itself to make a girl like her? Answer me that. Who made God? The most complicated thing in the universe. You answer me that. Uh, check and mate. You see, it's actually easier to believe in no God than it is to believe in God. We can see the eye. We can't see God. I can touch and feel Sandra. I, Teresa, you'd better not touch and feel Sandra. Sandra smiles. Roger, Teresa. To Teresa. You know what I mean. Uh, but I can't touch and feel God. And because it's so hard for me to, for, for me and the rest of your guests to believe in this warmongering being of yours, this destroyer of people who didn't even ask to be born, I mean, hey, I sure don't remember asking God for me to be born, uh, this loving, merciful being that tells us to believe in a person we never met or it's going to cast us into eternal hell? Really, Ted, says Teresa. Ted looks up. God, why are you, are you so blind to his guests? Look, I'm still here. I think God is bending over backwards for you, for all of you. I, 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 he's still holding the door open to you, allowing you a few seconds more. Roger. Well, I feel that he, he will, will allow us a whole lot more time, too. Just like with your last rap, rupture party. Looks at it, watch. Oh man, oh man. Bill and my green. What? It's almost two in the morning. Apparently it's almost noon in Jordan, according to, according to Jeremiah 49. That's the first place that gets it. TVs go on. Oh, here we go. Dave, with both hands clutching his microphone, the sound of air raid sirens are heard. Those who are in the newsroom are quickly moving about nervously. Michelle, I just got a report from the Israeli Defense Ministry that many missiles, like the one we saw that produced that huge cloud, have been launched from Iraq. Michelle, oh, Dave. Ted, Gad, this is it, folks. Just like worried, some talk amongst themselves. Dave, they all seem to be headed toward populated areas around Iraq. Six are headed south toward Arabia. Three are headed to Fort Tehran. For Tehran, two are headed toward Damascus, and five are, are headed west. Ted looking nervous. Here, here goes Jeremiah 49, folks. The woman in the newsroom, she gets up and leaves the room. I'm out of here. Michelle, Dave, Israel wasn't the only one that said that it would attack Israel, uh, Iraq with every weapon it had. Due to the thousands that died from the gas unleashed over our Syria, it has made Syria claim that it will strike Iraq with the nukes it's been hiding from the UN inspectors as well. Is there a fallout shelter in your area that you can quickly go to, can get to? Yes, that is, Michelle. And it looks like everyone is now headed to it. Ted, to, his, to himself, Rapture, where are you? After looking at the cloud, I was told that the very building I'm standing on has a bomb shelter that could survive a nuclear blast. Ted to himself. I could have gotten down from a roof. 
Dr. Ryan Green to Ted. What? Dave, it's a place where our, our news footage is kept. Michelle, how many people do you think can hold? A lot. I could have grabbed a coat, says Ted to himself. Michelle, Dave. Dave. Yes, Michelle. Michelle. I feel that it would be wise of you to get to that shelter. I mean, I don't want to bring up past history, but, well, you are Japanese. Dave, I know, Michelle, and, ja and Japanese and atom bombs don't get along very well, but... Cameraman. The camera the camera kind of jerks subtly, making Dave have, a, have to step in, into its view again as the cameraman begins to quickly run from the room. I'm sorry, Dave. My faith in the arrow missiles isn't as strong as yours. Dave to the cameraman as he leaves the newsroom. I don't have faith in the missiles either. It's God who will protect Israel. Some of the newsroom. Right, Lazar? Exactly, Dave. The good book says that affliction shall not rise up a second time. In other words, there ain't gonna be another holocaust. Ted, oh no. They don't know anything about the besom. Roger, you mean the Bible is wrong and there will be two afflictions? I think affliction means the Great Tribulation. The Holocaust was nothing in comparison to what's coming. And right now, everything is going to be destroyed with the besom of God. Laser. Why should the loving God nuke us after Germany did to us? Suddenly, the entire room lights up brighter than it was, causing reactions. Michelle, Dave! The TV shows nothing but snow. Michelle screams, no, Dave! Ted, that's it, folks. They're gone. TVs begin to slowly uh, come back on, showing Dave standing with more nervousness than before. Michelle, Michelle, can you hear me? Michelle, oh, Dave, we thought that was the end of you. I still, I still don't see any mushroom clouds, but the sky lit up three times right after I lost your signal. The suddenly three loud booming sounds occur. Each one is louder than the other. They sound like sonic booms, and the entire newsroom sways a bit as the rumbling is heard. I felt that. I felt that. I also hear rumbling. Oh, Michelle, I think they hit. I, hit, I think they hit Esau here. Ted Wiley to his guests. In Jordan, folks, just like Jeremiah 49 said would happen. Michelle, Dave, please get out of get to the shelter. Of course, this is Laser. Of course, so I can always interpret the good book wrongly. Bye quickly leaves. Goodbye, Lazar. Michelle, I, I, I'll come, I, I'll have to operate this camera by myself, being that I'm not the only one in the newsroom. He does. He points the camera in the direction of the window and runs over to the window. Can you see me? Ted, oh, the fool. I mean, he's not a fool. Michelle, Dave, don't, we don't care. Sign up from her uh, set and yelling, get out of there. Teresa, at the at the TV set, at the TV. Yes, get out of there. To his guests, he just doesn't know anything about the bism of God. There's now a cutting back and forth between newsrooms of Dave and uh, Michelle. Cut to Dave, Michelle. Cut to Michelle. I cut to Dave. Wait, cut to cut to Dave and from Michelle. Dave. Oh, Michelle, they have just fired a missile. Israel has just fired one of its arrow missiles. Cut to Michelle. We don't care, Dave. Just get out of there. You already got your, your history making report from the Shalom Tower Hotel. Cut to Dave. Oh, Israel has just fired two more missiles. Cut to Michelle from the, uh, with Bill in concern. Uh, Dave. Bill says, get out of there, man. Starting to put his hands over her face. The rest of the guests start becoming more and more concerned. Dave, excited. The missiles are traveling quickly. I'd say the lead one is already at 3,000 feet. Cut to Michelle. Almost crying at shouts. Dave, please get out of there. Please. 4,000 feet. Roger, get out of there, you idiot. <laughs> crying. You already got your historical footage. 5,000 feet. 5,000. Cut to Michelle. Dave. 8,000. Sorry for turning away. I, I can't watch this. Michelle Shane, Dave! Dave, oh, missile! I, I see the trail of another missile descending. Suddenly, the entire newsroom lights up from incredible brightness. Ah, oh, there's nothing but snow. Cut to Michelle. 
screaming, Dow! Falls back into her seat. Dave! TV screens go dark as someone rushes to, up to Michelle. Ted Jameson's guests continue to stare at the TV set. Ted, on the other hand, is staring outside from the balcony, looking out over the L.A. high-rises in the, in the night. Bill. Man. Israel has been nuked. And right in front of our eyes. Robert. You sure don't see that every day. Man, my heart is racing like I, you wouldn't believe. Sandra, I look at my hands. They're shaking like I have some kind of palsy. Ted slowly walks over to the balcony, looking as, as if he's lost in thought. Teresa, gee, for a man who wanted this so long, you sure don't seem t that happy about it. Ted sits down on the couch, stares at the floor. <sighs> Dr. Weingreen. Well, Mr. Jameson, after witnessing something that uh, you have told us would happen for so long appear to come true before your eyes, what do you think about it? I'm, I'm now hoping that uh, the rest of my theory is wrong. Roger smiling. Well, Ted, where's the rapture? How come you're still here? It's simple. I... I missed the rapture. Teresa smiling. What? Roger, how do you know that it even occurred? Man, when it says few there be that find it, it must really mean few there... It must really mean few there be that find it. The thing I'd like to know is, what did I do that would cause me to miss the rapture? What? Dr. Weingreen, such thinking isn't good for one's mental health, Ted. I can't believe I missed it. After all these crappy years, I must have some idols in my life I don't know of. Could that have been the reason? Teresa, sure, the rapture took place. Bill, well, Ted, what, what do you think will happen now? Ted gets up. The remnant of what Babylon hasn't destroyed will rise up quickly and make Babylon desolate without an inhabitant. Teresa, ooh, I'm scared. Ted, and then some of the TVs come back on. Michelle Takashi is sitting back in her seat with red eyes. She looks into the camera and says, wiping away tears, Ladies and gentlemen, it has just been confirmed by our GNN satellites that all of the countries Iraq has felt it has been oppressed by are now burning ruins, including Israel. In a few short moments, we will show you that at least 50 nuclear detonations were taking place in the Middle East just minutes ago. But first, we are getting a call from Edgar Roth in Baghdad. Yes, Edgar, what is it? Voice of Edgar, frantic as explosions and screams are heard. Frightened cries of Allah oh, Akbar are heard, like Allah oh, Akbar, Allah oh, Akbar. They're bombing the mosques. They're destroying the mosques. Swarms of fighter jets are hitting everything. The whole entire city of Baghdad is ablaze. It must be a desperate attempt to stop the missiles. And, oh no. God, no. I see exhaust rails. Exhaust rails in the sky. <laughs> coming toward me from the west. <laughs> coming, coming fast. Michelle, Edgar, son of the lines go dead and there's a loud annoying sound. TVs go dark. Ted putting his hands over his face. Oh no. Dr. Weingreen. What? What's the matter? Uh, with sadly with tears in his eyes. It's over. Roger. Well, Ted, maybe in the next 20 years you'll finally be right about this rapture, this rapture stuff. You don't understand. It's over. Robert, what do you mean? Existence as we know it. The world as we know it. Over. And the thing I wanted so badly has really screwed me now. Dr. Wygreen, Ted, what will help you to live with this disappointment is to start taking Prozac. Have you ever tried it? God, what have I done to, that would cause you cause me to miss the rapture? What have I done? Roger, you know, if you, if that, that was just a little louder, I think God might actually even hear you. She said, Roger, don't be cruel. Dr. Wygreen says, Ted, it's time to be honest with you. 
Although a great tragedy took place in the Middle East just now, that seems to greatly coincide with all your prophecy theories, I think it's very safe to say that people of a certain religious faith didn't vanish off into some kind of twilight zone tonight. Then goes over to the phone and starts dialing it. You'll wake up tomorrow with the cold, harsh reality again that you need psycholo psychological help due to being under the influence of something I would label as religious disillusional disorder. And I think I can help you. Listening to, to listen to the phone, he then turns to his guest and says, Hold your fingers crossed. There is a slim, po slim possibility that the rapture really hasn't happened. If it did take place, then no one should pick up this phone. Phew. Is this Jamal? This is Ted Jameson. I just was just calling to find out if you were still there, and thank God you are. Oh no. Oh no. Please no. How about Latifa? Oh man. Well, hey, don't feel bad about it. I'm here, and it looks like it looks like uh, we have a lot of company. Wow, that must have really been bizarre. Man, how creepy. She felt like a balloon popping from underneath you, huh? That must have been incredibly weird. What's my excuse for missing the rapture? I don't know. How about yours? Huh. So you can never go for a god that preached by slave owners, huh? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Well, what about his hair like wool? Oh, you found out that it was uh, white like wool and not wool itself. Huh. What am I going to do? Pray. What else can we do? Know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. The thing is, Jamal, you might not be separated from Lakeisha and your children for very long. Why? Uh, you'll know why pretty soon. Anyway, I, I, anyway it's scary, but uh, try not to worry about it. Okay? Bye. Well, folks, if we get the news that Baghdad has been destroyed, we won't be waking up tomorrow unless we get can get to a bomb shelter and fast because the world as we know it will be in the period known as the Great Tribulation. That was a close friend of mine I was ta just talking to. Apparently his wife and children were better able to believe in Jesus Christ than he was. He told me that he's really a believer now. He's really now a believer. Dr. Weingreen, did you really call someone just now or did you just talk into the phone just to make, just, just to scare us? Ted, you know, at this point, I really don't think I care what you think. Jamal told me that he woke up when his wife suddenly vanished from under him while, while uh, under him after they made love. I think he composed himself very well over the phone. He seemed to be more terrified of what was about to happen to him than he was about missing his wife. Dr. Weingreen. Are you sure you aren't making this up? Ted to the others. I just know that any minute now we will be getting the report that the, re that the prophet Jeremiah predicted millenniums ago, and when we, and we will soon know the reason why the reporter's line suddenly went dead. And when we do, well, when we do, you and I had better get down on our knees and pray, and we should, pr we should all pray like we have never prayed before. Robert with terror eyes. Why? Roger. Because Ted thinks it's due to, to that one scripture that says, At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved, and a cry is heard among the nations. 